Hello, my name is Dr. Fred Sutton. In this video, I will be analyzing transactions. So if you can see behind me here, you'll see that I have basically put down information about the balance sheet. And I've gone over this in previous videos, with show assets equals liabilities and orders equity. And I've also put a line here in between those also, in your debits and credits. So you can see that. Also in here, I have the income statement. If you'll notice, the income statement is on this side of the equal sign because it falls into the owner's equity and feeds into the owner's equity section in here. So that's why it's over on this side. So when we use debits and credits, I want you to realize that and what it means to the overall balance sheet. So let's analyze some transactions here. So one of the first ones I want to analyze is a purchase of supplies. So if I purchase supplies here, I will use cash for that. So I'm going to have a minimum of two, trans two accounts that I am playing with here to uh, complete this transaction. So if I purchase supplies for $500, this is my, excuse me, my debits here, and this is my credit. You will see here that I have $500 debited and a $500 credit. The reason I have this indented is to show that this is a credit. So anything that's flush on the left hand side here will be a debit, and anything that has an indent will be a credit. And so sometimes I'll have several and I'll walk through ones that have that. So how does this affect the accounting equation and how everything is done here? Again, this is cash over here, 500, I'm taking that away, and then adding $500 of supplies right here. So again, this accounting equation still balances. All right, so let's try a different one here. And I'm going to pay some expenses. So I'm going to pay some wages expenses. And I'm just going to call it EXP for expenses. And then I'm also going to pay um, my cable expense. And I'll just create a spell that out. And then maybe I will have some additional expenses as in uh, a water expense. So I am going to pay several expenses all together here, and then I will pay that with cash. So I have cash here that I'm going to be outlaying for these expenses. So I may have $200 for wages, $50 for cable, and $50 for water. If I total all those up, that equals $300. So I have $300 in cash in my outlay here, and then I have these expenses. So in here, what will happen is, is I will have wages for 200. I have cable for 200, excuse me, $50. And then I have water for $50. So that totals their $300. I will then have a cash outlay here of $300. As you can see, it still balances. My debits, these are my debits, and this is my credit. Now, you're going to look at this and go, wait a minute, though. This doesn't balance here because this increases as I add to this. Because this is an increase, and this is a decrease. This is an uh, decrease, and this is an increase. So what is happening here? Well, what this is doing is taking away from my overall net income. I am lowering my net income therefore lowering my owner's equity, and then also lowering my asset here. So as you can see, this is how it works together. So this is another uh, problem that we have done. So let's take a look at here, and I'm gonna do a liability, another transaction here. So I'm gonna purchase a building. So I'm getting an asset of a building, and I'm gonna pay $100,000 for it. But I'm not just gonna pay just with uh, a, uh, a notes payable, because I'm going to have, and it's only going to be a portion of it, and some of it I will have in cash. So as you can see here on this uh, this transaction that I've just provided is that the building is hundred thousand dollars. I pay a portion of it in my notes payable, or this could be mortgage payable, however, and then you have cash for twenty thousand dollars here. So both again, debits and credits equal hundred thousand each. 
And so let's put those over into the appropriate places in the balance sheet. So in here I have the building. So I have an asset that I get, it's a building for $100,000. And then I also have a notes payable here and a commitment to pay them of $80,000. And then I'm gonna take away cash of $20,000. And so that is how it breaks down. Again, so if you look at this equation here, if I take the 100,000 minus the 20, this side equals 80,000 on the debit side. And then here, you'll see the notes payable also equals 80,000. So I have, again, I am balanced. And so those are some equations that will help you understand about what happens in each of these transactions and how they affect each of these areas. This is the balance sheet, and remember the income statement flows into the owner's equity, and that's why those changes there occur. This is Analyzing Transactions, and I'm Dr. Sutton, and thank you for listening today.